Hi, I'm Victoria Finley Wolf, and I'm a designer for Sizzix. Today, we're going to be looking at the mini wave die. Get over your fear about curves. I have easy little tricks to putting these together. Curves are not difficult to do, they can be your friends, and we're going to go over it today with three easy pins. I keep my pins handy, and I'm going to show you um, what you can do with this little die. Okay? So, this is one of the samples that we've made. Made a little American flag out of it. Um, by using the die, which I'm going to show you, cutting them out in just a moment, um, and then flip-flopping the shapes gives you this nice little curvy wave pattern. Makes a great little project for the holiday, and um, there's also a lot of different things that you can do with this die. So let me show you some of the other things you can do. So let's cut some of the shapes out. So I'm using my mini wave die. You can use up to eight layers of fabric to lay on your die. Today I have four pieces that I'm going to use. Um, I'm using the little small cutting pad that comes as extra. It doesn't come with the Big Shot Pro, but if you have the Fabi or the Big Shot or the Big Kick, you'll already have this piece available. Okay, so I'm going to use this just to roll this through here. So I have my four pieces cut out, and I want to be able to show you a couple different ways that you can lay these out and sew them together. On the larger die, I have a wave die, it's a larger template, and I sew those together in rows making the wavy pattern. But when I use the mini wave die, I like to do them in columns so that I'm just sewing these short curves together. But you also have the option of sewing them to make the wave when you do the columns, right? I could do it in two columns this way, as opposed to trying to do this tight little curve uh, in rows. So this works better in this case to do the short pieces together, the short curves, and make a column, and then we're going to sew those together, which is what I'm going to be showing you here in a minute. Um, but you can also do, by changing the layout, you could do scallops, right? So if we continued going all the way across, you could do this sort of a layout as well, instead of flip-flopping them to do the wave. Okay, so let me show you how I sew those together. So for the curvy part, like I said, I sew them together in columns using this, the mini wave die. Okay, so here I have two columns together. My first column, my second row, the pieces are flip-flopped. So now I'm going to put this row on together. So when I start to sew these little curves together, this is the part where we want to take the fear away from you for doing curves. Okay, the first thing you need to do when you're doing curves is find your centers. So just an easy finger press, fold your pieces in half. You always want to know on a curve where your center of the curve lies. So having that finger press, then I'm able to take three pins. That's all I keep handy, is three handy pins, and I pin at a quarter inch down. Okay, so there's my quarter inch, and I pin at a quarter inch because that's my sewing line. So if I'm sewing a quarter inch seam, as I'm coming around and sewing my curve, I can check to make sure, because I see where the pin has gone into the fabric, that's just a little check for yourself to make sure that you're still sewing a quarter inch. In case sometimes you take a bigger seam or you take a seam that's too little, you want to be able to just check yourself and take a quarter inch, double check by the way that you've pinned. And I also want to show you at the beginning of a curve, often people are not quite sure where they need to line this up. You'll have a tiny little overlap of the little dog ear that sticks out. And where the dog ear sticks out and meets up with the fabric that's on the bottom makes a quarter inch overlap. It's your sewing line, again. So that's the little space that you're looking for. Okay, it's a quarter inch overlap, that's where you pin. And let me do that on the other side as well. When I put my raw edges together, the little dog ear sticks over. It's not quite a quarter inch, but where those two fabrics line up, that's the quarter inch that you're looking for. Okay, so I have my three pins, and you'll notice that this piece is very floppy on the top. And that's a little guide that I like to use, is belly on the bottom and the floppy toppy. The floppy toppy is the piece of fabric that does not lay flat when you're working with your curves. You want that piece on the top. If I tried to sew that this way, you'll, all the fabric will pleat underneath it. You won't be able to see where the fabric is going. So if you remember, the piece with the more fabric, the floppy on the top, that way when you're sewing, you can control and make sure you're not getting any pleats of that fabric. So the beauty then about using Sizzix is for great accurate piecing. 
So if we use those three pins, you can see that naturally when I put my raw edges together, they line up perfectly. There's no extra fabric, okay? So when I'm sewing, I'm gonna sew from my first pin and I'm gonna focus on getting from the first pin to the second pin. All I'm looking at is that and keeping my raw edges together. Once I get to the center pin, then I'll focus on the second to the third pin. And again, you can see that the raw edges line up perfectly. So there's no easing. We don't need to ease any extra fabric in. With having your pieces cut properly, everything will line up wonderfully and you'll see that curves are really not that difficult. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew this. So starting at the beginning of my fabrics, so I'm gonna sew a little bit in backstitch. And I'm gonna keep sewing a quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna just focus on getting from that first pin to the second pin. My raw edges are together. I can control the fabric and see that I'm not gonna get any pleats because I'm keeping the floppy part out of the way. I get to my middle pin. And now I'm gonna focus from the middle out to the third pin. Again, checking to make sure I'm always sewing in my quarter inch seam. And backstitch. Okay, we'll give that a little press. Okay, and there we have one of the seams together. So we're gonna continue sewing this column together. Always finding your centers. Putting in my three pins. Pin your centers first. Looking for your little overhang so you have your quarter inch where your fabrics overlap because that's your sewing line. And then I'm going to keep sewing. Doing the same thing again. Just focusing on the first pin to the second pin. Take it down to baby steps so that curves are not challenging. So now that we have our columns sewn together, right, we've mastered that small little curve. Now we're going to show how you put these together to join the rows. So the little challenge that you have, it's not difficult, but again, you have to pin, um, is learning how to pin where these curves need to line up. Okay, and that's where, again, having your three pins handy, pinning at a quarter inch where your sewing line is, is key to making these seams line up in the middle. So I'm going to focus on pinning, again, right exactly on my seam at a quarter inch. And then when I pick up my second piece that are right sides together, of course, I'm also going to pin at a quarter inch. The reason I'm doing that is because then after I sew this and I flip the fabric open, those seams will line up perfectly. So if you pin it in place, the fabrics will be in place when you flip it open, okay? I've also, I pressed the fabrics on one column with all the seam allowances going down and on the next piece I uh, pressed it so all the seam allowances are going up. That way I don't have the extra fabrics all meeting at the same place. They're both laying in opposite directions so that everything will lay nice and flat afterwards. So again, each time you pin, you pin at a quarter inch into your seam and a quarter inch into the uh, matching seam. Okay, so now that I have those pins placed, you can already see that I have my little dog ear lines up perfectly. That's where you can see where you're gonna start to sew. So if you wanna drop a couple extra pins in there just to hold your beginning and your end, you can certainly do that. And now we can go ahead and sew it. So again, starting at the beginning of my fabric, and I'm gonna begin sewing my quarter inch back stitch. continue to sew to my next pin. So again, because we pinned it at a quarter inch, we can check as I'm coming to the next pin, I can make sure that the needle is lining up where exactly I pinned into the fabric. Okay, that way I know if I intersect at that point, that those seams are gonna line up. And now we can give that a final press. Um, on the seams, when the pressing, you can press them going one direction. If you want to open them up, you can to make that completely lay nice and flat or just press them all in one direction. And there you have your little rows of waves together. So not difficult, but it does increase your patience on learning how to take the time to pin and you will get lovely results using the curves, okay? So, and here's the second example, already shown, sewn together, where instead of flipping 
the die shape. I've done them the same way, so you could do a whole scallop quilt going the opposite direction of what you've done here. So that's the mini wave die. Thanks for coming to learn your curves. Don't be afraid of them. They're great fun.